from the South Point studio. There. The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. It's the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. What? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least... Two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. Oreo. And host, Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look at the clock? I... Ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, specially adapted adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. Live from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, righty, righty. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday edition of the Race Day Las Vegas radio program. We come to you live and direct from the gaming capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, right here at our studio station on the South Point Studios streaming network on YouTube. And we hope that uh, all of you that uh, listen to our shows uh, many years, for many years, try this out. If you haven't, just go to YouTube, hit South Point Studios, and you'll see a streaming of video and audio for the Race Day shows and uh, we hope that uh, you subscribe as well. That's free. Get you uh, listening on YouTube and watching on the YouTube network. And, of course, that is the South Point Studios here on the fabulous Las Vegas Strip at the South Point Hotel Casino Complex in Las Vegas. We welcome you to the show covering racing and a little sports, Las Vegas style. And, of course, we do want to mention and, uh, and certainly greet all of our uh, listeners that uh, still listen on the radio. If you're running around town early this Sunday morning at our anchor station, our Sports Talk 1400 AM, 107.1 FM, that's where you can hear us here in Las Vegas. And, of course, all of the other platforms that we have, our Race Day Las Vegas websites, racedaylasvegas.com, .vegas, .world, .global. You got your iPhone, your Android with the KSHP app and the YouTube app where you can also watch us 
on your devices, your iPhones and your Androids, and of course, anywhere you get your podcasting. So simply put, however, wherever, whenever, welcome to the Sunday show here from Las Vegas. I uh, got to tell you, it was an exciting day of racing yesterday, exciting day on the uh, court for the final four. We now are set for the big final game tomorrow, the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament Championship. That started with March Madness several weeks ago. It's down to two teams for the championship, and that'll happen tomorrow night. We'll get more on that from Rich Ang a little bit later on. And, of course, we wrapped up most of all of the Kentucky Derby leaderboard points with the three big 100-point getters yesterday around the country. So most of the Kentucky Derby points are gone. There's only one race left that holds 20 of them. That's the Lexington. That'll be held on the 13th of this month. And then uh, we got to wait for all of the horses that have points up to the uh, 20th position to make sure that they will stay healthy and ready to go for the Kentucky Derby on the first Saturday in May. And all of those horses that are just on the cuffs waiting for one or two or three of the horses in the body of the uh, point getters to maybe either get scratched for one reason or another. So it's, we're getting into that tedious time right now for the Kentucky Derby, the 150th running of your run for the Roses. And we'll be here on the race day studios with a lot of specials here. Uh, first of all, on Thursday, that'll be the uh, uh, second Thursday, the 2nd of May. We'll have a special Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby preview show only here on the YouTube network, South Point Studios streaming YouTube network. It's the only place you can get it. It'll be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on that Thursday. We're going to go over not only the uh, Kentucky Derby briefly, but then, of course, we're going to be doing the Kentucky Oaks Day card because the Kentucky Oaks Day card will be the next day. That'll be, of course, on the 3rd of May where you have the big Kentucky Oaks Day racing card, and then concluding after the Kentucky Oaks Day racing card and racing in Southern California right around 6 o'clock in the evening that next day on the 3rd of May, we'll be holding our annual Kentucky Derby seminar in the Grandview Lounge right adjacent to the race book here at the South Point. We'll be there starting that at 6 o'clock with our team, Jonathan Hardoon will be flying in from New York. He'll also be here for the Thursday special show on YouTube. And, of course, John Linda will be here as well. I'll be refereeing these two. And these guys have been right on the mark so far with the Kentucky Derby horses, the preview horses leading up to the Derby. So it'll be interesting to see after they, uh, of course, after the horses get there, after they've been training on the uh, Churchill Downs track to see how the horses like that track and certainly the post-position draw. The final will be the Kentucky Derby Seminar, and that'll be that Friday night, Kentucky Derby Eve. And then the next day on Kentucky Derby Day, well, we all go up to the Grand Ballroom for the big Kentucky Derby Day celebration on the 4th of May, the first Saturday in May, with the big screen TVs, huge, big, huge TVs, a whole bunch of little TVs, too, in there that you can play the other races that are running that day as well so you don't miss any action, an entire Churchill Downs card as well. And there'll be plenty of betting uh, windows, live windows. You got your betting kiosks there as well. And, of course, food and drink uh, beverage uh, discounts, uh, good deals on the food and beverage. And, of course, a Kentucky Derby hat contest. And they're going to have uh, several categories, too. It'll be the best horse-themed, the best fascinator or fedora, the best overall, uh, and, of course, uh, the uh, overall on each category as well and cash prizes for those. So you come on out and have your best Kentucky Derby hat with you, just celebrating the run for the roses, America's most famous horse race. It all happens here at the South Point, beginning Thursday night with the 3 o'clock show here on YouTube only. And I'll roll right through Kentucky Derby Day, and it's all free to you. Just come on out and join us and celebrate the Derby with us, okay? All right, so what happened yesterday? And all of these big races. Well, let's take a look. We start out at Aqueduct Racecourse. And, of course, the the Wood Memorial holding 100 Kentucky Derby points. In the Grade 2 Wood Memorial, the winner there was Resilience after a spill at the uh, right between the top of the stretch and the 16th pole. Number 12, Deposition went down when he clipped heels with a horse in front of him. Deposition the horse and the jockey, Mr. Haddock. Is okay, both the jockey and the horse. The jockey got up right away. The horse was captured right away. No harm, no foul, but it was kind of a spectacular look as they were running down the race racetrack. In the meantime, 
Resilience uh, got the lead in about the 16th poll and pulled away under John Velasquez. And uh, Resilience wins the Wood Memorial for trainer Bill Mott. Paid $11 even, if you remember. That was one of Jonathan Hardoon's uh, horses that he wanted to hook up uh, in that race. So uh, Resilience wins. He's on his way to the Kentucky Derby with 100 uh, points. And then, as a result of all the confusion with the horse going down, behind Resilience was a chorus line of long shots that included Society Man, who finished second, and Protective, who finished third. And I can tell you that that 10-cent Superfecta with these huge long shots finishing second, third, and fourth, the winning numbers of 1, 11, 5, and 3, 10-cent Super paid $6,776.55. So there was a scramble behind Resilience, but Resilience, the big winner of the Wood Memorial there. And uh, he will go on now to the uh, Kentucky Derby. At Keeneland Racecourse, in the Bluegrass Stakes, that 100 points in the Kentucky Derby uh, leaderboard, the mile and one-eighth Bluegrass Stakes, I can tell you right now, the winner of this race was extremely impressive. Sierra Leone, who broke from an outside post going two turns at uh, Keeneland, and sort of really moving against the track bias that seemed to be you had to be close to the lead and on the inside, he overcame both of those biases coming from way left field in the, in the race, circled him at the top of the stretch, battled the leaders, and then pulled away. Sierra Leone wins the Bluegrass Stakes for trainer Chad Brown, Tyler Gaff-Leone. Uh, that was his second win of the day. Sierra Leone paid $5.32. He did not fool any of the betting public there, that's for sure. Just a touch. This was the big horse that uh, Jonathan Hardoon, Hardoon liked. Uh, Jonathan said, hook just a touch up with Sierra Leone and uh, Dornock. Well, Dornock, with their experiment trying to change his running style, didn't finish anywhere. Dornock was just a no, no, no low contendere yesterday. But Sierra Leone, that was an impressive win. He paid, again, $5.32. Chad Brown has a key horse now for the Kentucky Derby. Finishing second was just a touch. Finishing third in the race was Epic Ride. That was a big long shot as well. And all I can say is that Sierra Leone uh, was Richie Eng's pick, by the way, on the show. And, of course, uh, one of the three horses that Jonathan told you to box. He got the, uh, Jonathan got the exact with those three. But in any case, uh, Sierra Leone, a big win yesterday at Keeneland in the bluegrass. And then finally, at Santa Anita yesterday, in the Santa Anita Derby, that was the 10th race on the card. By the time they got to the 10th race on the card, jockey Frankie DeTore had won six races on the card. And he was sitting on the prohibitive favorite in the race. Of course, that was Imagination. Bob Baffert trainee. And so turning for home, Imagination was battling with Stronghold, winner of the Sunland Park Derby and a Phil D'Amato trainee. And these two went at it, head to head. And when they came to the wire, Stronghold got the best of imagination to win for Antonio Fresu, paying $6.40. Phil D'Amato on his way to the Kentucky Derby with Stronghold. Imagination did finish second. EJ won the cup, a big long shot, finished third in that race. And so you have uh, Stronghold uh, and, of course, Sierra Leone and Resistance winning the three big races yesterday. In the big three pick three, remember they were promoting this a lot. It was a $3 bet coupling the Wood Memorial with Resilience, the Bluegrass with Sierra Leone, and the Santa Anita Derby with Stronghold. Again, winning prices, $11 even, $5.32 and six forty. The $3 payoff was $226 and 50 cents. So yesterday was a big day, of course, for the Derby prep races. Now, they did have a couple of prep races for the Kentucky Oaks, 100 points for the Kentucky Oaks. And in the Kentucky Oaks, the prep race, remember the Ashland was the day before, it was Friday at uh, Keeneland. But at uh, Aqueduct, they had the Gazelle. The Gazelle held 100 points in the Kentucky Oaks leaderboard. The winner there was Where's My Ring, Jose Lascano riding for Val Brinkerhoff. Where's My Ring paid $7.10 for the win, outrunning regular risk, regulatory risk, I should say, and Jin Jin, who finished third. So Where's My Ring now on 
with enough points to get into the Kentucky Oaks. And at Santa Anita, earlier on the card in the Santa Anita Oaks, in the Santa Anita Oaks, the winner there was nothing like you. Now, Bob Baffert had the race favorite in the race, Kinza. And Kinza turned for home on top, battling with the long shot, Corposo, or Corp Oso, Corposo. And left the rail open for nothing like you, who was sitting right between these two battlers. Nothing like you rolled up the rail and won the race and was a Bob Baffert trainee anyhow. So Bob Baffert finishes first and second. Nothing like you wins over Kinza. Uh, Corposo was third. That was Frankie DeTore's fifth race, fifth win in a row yesterday at Santa Anita. And uh, Nothing Like You paid sixteen forty for the win in that Kentucky Oaks. Baffert finishes first and second in that race. So those are the point leaders that uh, won yesterday. They are on their way to Kentucky. And as far as the Kentucky Derby points, now that we look at those Kentucky Derby points, here's how it looks. Sierra Leone has 155 points. He's on top. Fierceness, who was a big winner in that Florida Derby, he's second with 136. Catching Freedom, 125. Stronghold, 125. You have Resilience at 110. Forever Young, 100. And Endlessly at 100. So the top seven horses on the leaderboard list all have 100 or more uh, points. They are absolutely in. To round out the top 10, you have Doorknock, still got 75 points, although finishing off the board yesterday. Just a Touch, who finished second in the uh, Bluegrass. That was one of, uh, you remember, Jonathan Ardoon's top five uh, selections for the Kentucky Derby so far, with no points until yesterday. Uh, Just a Touch now sits in 19th with 75. Track Phantom rounds it out in 10th with 70. We'll take a look at the complete leaderboard list. We'll take a look at our latest update for our handicappers and their top five going into the Kentucky Derby all on Wednesday show. But that's how it uh, shook out yesterday as far as the results in the big races. There were a lot of undercard stakes races, though. And in those, we'll go through those real quick. The Carter handicap was won by Post Time, $3.60. Brittany Russell trained, Sheldon Russell ridden. Finishing second was Castle Chaos. Third was Super Chow. In the distaff at Aqueduct, uh, Sheeta Booty wins it for Chad Brown. Dylan Davis's third win of the day there. $19 even, outrunning Ain't Broke and uh, Finnegal's Cave. In the uh, Bay Shore Stakes at seven furlongs for three-year-olds, the winner there was Reasoned Analyst Analysis. Reasoned Analysis for Eric Cancel, another Chad Brown winner. Paid $33 in winning the Bay Shore, outrunning Maximus Meridus, and uh, finishing third was Eliminate. And those were the stakes races yesterday at Aqueduct. Want to give Jerry J a high five. He had the winner of the last race and the dollar exacta on the show. That winner, Peone, paid $5.90. The dollar exacta with the hookup for a buck paid $10.40. Nobody hit the pick six yesterday at Aqueduct. You got to carry over today. At uh, Keeneland, the other stakes races at Keeneland yesterday. Uh, the Commonwealth, the Grade Three Commonwealth, was won by Bo Cruz, Jose Ortiz's second win of the day for trainer Al Stahl, paying fourteen dollars and twelve cents, outrunning uh, Minnesota Red Ready and uh, Winco in the Appalachian Stakes. The winner there was Buchu, uh, Buchu with uh, Martin Garcia aboard for uh, Phil Bauer, paid fifteen dollars and four cents, outrunning Mo Fox Given, and uh, finishing third was Danson and Dixie. In the Madison Stakes, the winner there was Alva Starr. Tyler Gaffleyon, uh, another winner there for Brett Brickman, paying $6.32, outrunning Bahava and Red Carpet Ready. And in the Shakertown Stakes, uh, that uh, quick five-and-a-half furlong turf race, stakes race at Keeneland, the winner there was Arzak. Irad Ortiz Jr.'s second win of the day for Mike Trembetta, paying $9.24, outrunning Mischief Magic and Imon, who finished third in that race. And at Santa Anita, what a day Lanfranco Frankie DeTore had. Won the second race, paying six sixty. Won the third race, paying eighteen twenty. Won the fourth race, which was the evening jewel stakes with uh, Robert's Love, paying twenty one sixty for trainer Hector Palma, outrunning Safa and Clubhouse Bride. Won the fifth race for Richard Dutro, paying fifteen dollars even. Won the sixth race, which was the uh, Santa Anita Oaks with nothing 
like you paying sixteen forty for Bob Baffert, and won the seventh race paying ten eighty for six wins in a row. He did not ride the eighth in the ninth race, the Monrovia Stakes. He finished uh, third in that race. A. G. Bullet outran uh, Ms. Lizzie to win that one for Rispoli. Uh, Rispoli. Richard Balt is trained, paying five dollars even in that Monrovia, and in the Santa Anita Derby, of course. Stronghold beat uh, DeFranco on uh, imagination. So Frankie DeTore, six wins in a row. Maybe he shouldn't have took off that one race because when he came back, he got beat in a battle in the Santa Anita Derby. Couldn't win either the uh, next uh, last two races after that. And the Echo Eddie stakes, the final race on the card in the big racing day yesterday at Santa Anita. Uh, Shady Tiger wins. That was John Lindo's pick on the show. Won easily, paid $8 even. Thank you, John. Another win for Phil D'Amato there. And the uh, pick six at Santa Anita yesterday, $4,024.20. Remember, today there is a mandatory payoff at Santa Anita on all the pools because it uh, is closing day for the uh, winter spring meet. They're going to take a week off. They won't run another racing card for a week. They're going to take a week off. So today is closing day for this meet at Santa Anita. Quickly at Oaklawn Park, the Rainbow Mistakes won by Hush It Honey. Rafael Bejarano for uh, Randy Ma- Morris paying 440. And then the Rainbow Stakes, the winner there was Patton, Patton's Tizzy for Brad Cox paying $24.20. Martin Chuan's first graded stakes win for that jockey. And, of course, in the final four yesterday, Connecticut and Purdue did their number the way they were supposed to, and they will go on to the final game tomorrow night. A whole lot more to cover. We have Jonathan Hardoon standing by, Rich Ang as well, Jerry Jackowitz, and, of course, we got uh, John Lindo's picks for you as well. So don't go away. We're just starting out on this Sunday race day show. Now you know everything that went on yesterday. Now let's take a look at what's going to happen today. We'll be right back. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. All right, back on Race Day Las Vegas as we continue on our Sunday show. Going to be a big day tomorrow with the uh, final game between Connecticut and Purdue. That's going to be a hell of a game in the uh, NCAA Basketball Championship. And, of course, latest news on uh, horses for the Derby, the Triple Crown, etc. You know that the uh, ruling for Bob Baffert's uh, Muth, they're trying to get him into the Kentucky Derby. They went to court to try to get him a stay for that race. We'll wait and see. Monday will be the decision in Kentucky. But Nysos, uh, which is uh, Bob Baffert's top uh, three-year-old in the uh, country right now, was preparing for the Preakness Stakes. Remember, he was off the uh, trail for a while. He was supposed to go in the San Anita Derby, but they took him off the trail for a while. For whatever reasons they have, they haven't really been specific about it. But in any case, news came out yesterday that Baffert said that Nysos will not be ready for the Preakness Stakes either. And so all we have to think of is, What's up with that, right? All right, we're going to go to your uh, racing menu, and then we're going to get to Jonathan Ardoon. I swear we'll get to Jonathan Ardoon. Stay right there, Jonathan. Right now it's 45 degrees out here in Las Vegas. Going to get up to 68, but you know the the weather's always fast, firm, and perfect in our race books. As far as the country is concerned, looks pretty good across the entire country, east to west coast in the Gulf. As far as today is concerned, the weather may be a factor next week, but for today it looks like we'll have okay racing in all the major racing centers. First post times for the racing menu is that of the Pacific time zone. Remember that. If you're not in the Pacific time zone, adjust to it. Don't want you to miss anything like I miss mom and dad. And let's get going with your menu. Here we go. We begin with um, Laurel Park. 
Laurel Park, uh, first post time at Laurel. Uh, today is at 925, and I'm going to try to get you your carryovers right now, if this computer will work. Let's see, it does. Okay, it does. Good, 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 good. Uh, Laurel Park has uh, no carryovers today. All right, so first post time for nine races, 925 at Laurel. Next comes Tampa Bay Downs. Tampa Bay Downs has a first post time of 930 for their nine race card. They have a pick, pick six jackpot carryover, $3,283. They've got a super high five carryover, $3,777. First post time, 9.30 at Tampa Bay. Keeneland Racecourse has a couple of nice stakes races today. The $250,000 Palisade Stakes for three-year-olds at five and a half furlongs on the turf will be the seventh, 14 before scratches. It is a wide open affair. The morning line favorite at five to two is No Name Mets with Ira Ortiz Jr. Then you have the $400,000 Grade 2 Beaumont for three-year-old fillies at seven furlongs. A small field of six there. Even money favorite is you almost uh, you almost had me. Well, we hope they have them. Uh, that in the uh, Beaumont. Even money with uh, Tyler Gaffleon. Nine races today at Keeneland. And uh, Keeneland's first post time today is set at uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. at Keeneland. Gulfstream Park. Pick six rainbow jackpot carryover. $44,323. First post time at Gulfstream is at 10:10 for their nine races. Aqueduct, the big A in New York. Uh, first post time for eight races at Aqueduct is set at 10:20. 10:20 first post at Aqueduct, and uh, they have a carryover in the pick six, $72,394.17 today. Track is fast at Aqueduct. That's your pick six carryover at the big A today. First post time 10:20 for their eight race card. Sunland Park has a big day of racing, nine races, five stakes races. The $125,000 Island Fashion for three-year-old fillies is the second. The Pepper's Pride, the $100,000 Pepper's Pride is the fourth. And then you have the $125,000 Mind That Bird Derby, and that is the seventh on the card. The Sunland Park Handicap is the eighth, and the New Mexico State University Handicap is the ninth. That's a hundred grand as well. Big day of racing at Sunland. First post time for the nine race is set at 11.25. And uh, it is a mandatory payoff there at Sunland today. Super high five carryover, 183 bucks. Mandatory payoffs today at Sunland. Then you have Oak Lawn Park. They have nine races. The Eclipse Stakes is their eighth and featured at six furlongs for four-year-olds and up. And it's a wide open affair there. Oakland Par- Oak Lawn Park's first post time is 10.30. Hawthorne Racecourse has nine races today. They have a super high five carryover, $4,517. And their first post time at Hawthorne for nine races, 12.40. Closing day at Santa Anita, 11 races. First post time is 1 o'clock this afternoon. Mandatory payoffs there. A couple of stakes races. The $100,000 John Shear stakes at six and a half furlongs on the turf is the fifth. Seven go to the post before scratches. Eight to five favorites heart-headed, heart-headed with uh, Juan Hernandez. And then the... uh, Angels Flight Stakes is the ninth, six and a half furlongs on the turf for three year old Phillies, a field of nine in that one. And the favorite at five to two is Luleen uh, Lolan, I should say. Antonio Freso aboard there uh, for Lone in that race. I probably screwed up the name, but that's the favorite there. First post time for the 11 races at Santa Anita's at one o'clock this afternoon. The track announcer, Frank Miramati, will get it right, trust me. Golden Gate has seven races. Golden Gate's first post time is set at 1.15. They got a pick six jackpot carryover, $52,505. First post time at Golden Gate, 115. We wrap it up with Los Alamitos in Southern California, Los Al. They'll seed the pick six pot today at Los Alamitos at $10,000. $10,000 already in the pot for Los Alamitos and their pick six. First post time is 540. Nine races, one third bed, five mixed breed, three quarter horse races. And that's it. That's your menu. Let's bring in. Ah, and. I got to tell you, folks, I'm a little bit out of breath for that. But uh, let me bring in John, Jonathan Hardoon to give me a little respite here. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. Good job. If they paid me <laughs> by the word, I'd be living at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Well, you know, real quick, uh, any thoughts about the three, uh, you know, derby? Well, races? I mean... Door knock, we figured out can't rate, so they had tried an experiment in a million dollar race. But that's you know you're afforded that luxury when you have enough points. The problem is now we know one thing: he needs to go, so he's going to go with fierceness, and this is only good news for Sierra Leone. 
The only question I have about Sierra Leone was what were the antics he was pulling prior to the race? He didn't want to get in that gate, you know. He held up post for a few minutes. And on Derby Day, there's going to be 100,000 people at Churchill Downs. So, you know, hopefully he behaves himself because obviously he's got a world of talent. Yeah, no question about that. And I was uh, in the book uh, yesterday uh, playing the races with a lot of our our friends here uh, watching the races in the uh, South Point book on the big screen there. And I had mentioned to him twice when I saw him in the paddock, I said, boy, this is a big horse. And then when I saw him in the post parade with the uh, pony, obviously, next to him and sizing him up with the other horses in there, this is a this is a big animal. Well, that's what two point three million dollars looks like, Ralph. They paid a lot of money for the horse. And obviously he must be a good looking horse. You know, they 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 dipped in their pockets and they paid a lot of money for him and they're getting returns. It always doesn't work out. However, so far in this case it's working out fine. Well, you know, you By have... the way, Ralph, Go ahead. Well, back to the Gazette in New York. Yeah, Congratulations yeah. to Val Brinkenhoff. He sent a maiden there, a maiden from California to win that race. So he gets enough points to put her in the Kentucky Oaks now, and that was a pretty good story. He's a hardworking trainer from SoCal, yeah. doesn't have many good horses, and uh, it's nice to see a story like You're that. You're absolutely right. I mean, that was one heck of a, a, a training feat, but, uh, you know, and he's a, he's a good trainer, so he knew what he had, and although people thought he was like five times crazy for going across country and putting this horse in a race like that, well, he proved to them that... Uh, he knew what he was, he had yeah. uh, sort, of, sort of under the hood, so to speak. Anyhow, uh, yeah, that'll be exciting. And, you know, we got to remind everybody, too, that Kentucky Oaks is a big race and a big day of racing. I'm glad that we're doing the Thursday show here at 3 o'clock. And remember, folks, again, for those of you listening on all the other platforms that we have, the radio uh, outlets and the, the, uh, the, the uh, websites that we uh, broadcast over, et cetera, and all of the podcasting, remember this. There's only one way you're going to get the Thursday show on the eve of the Kentucky Oaks, and that is through the YouTube South Point Studios streaming network. Go to YouTube at South Point Studios. You'll get it at 3 o'clock on that Thursday, which is the 2nd of May, and we'll be talking about the Kentucky Oaks and all the uh, other stakes races on that card for Friday and giving you a preview of what we'll be talking about in the Breeders uh, in the uh, Kentucky Derby, I should say, seminar on that uh, following day on that Friday night. So make sure you stay tuned and be tuned in for that. We want everybody to join us on that and try out the YouTube, um, you know, the YouTube outlet, the South Point streaming there. Uh, you're right. I think, so the most impressive of the day, do you think was uh, Sierra Leone or, um, or Stronghold? Stronghold uh, ran a big race. Was- Yeah, but Sierra Leone was a full field. Uh, He was breaking from an impossible post to win, and his running style actually doesn't fit Keelan. It's very tough to win from behind, and he won from way behind. Yeah, he had the fractions and the setup, but uh, listen, and again, I'm sure he wasn't squeezed to the max. You know, they had the derby one month away from yesterday, and they certainly didn't want to empty the tank, and he just ran, ran lights out. Yeah, no question about that. And, you know, there was the Kentucky Derby Future Book Pool, the last paramutual pool for the Kentucky Derby, the one that Churchill Downs puts out. It was paramutual. And uh, that uh, that pool closed before all three of these uh, prep races. So in the end, that uh, the closing prices on that were fierceness at 5-2. to two. Sierra Leone, nice 7-1. to one. That's a nice price now looking wow. at it. Forever Young, 8-1, to one, Deterministic and Catching Freedom, and Doorknock all 12-1. to one. Um, I would imagine that the Doorknock would probably be a higher price right now. And then you have... So, so Deterministic, by the way, who didn't run well at all in New York, uh, you know, trying two turns for the first time. So there's going to be a question if he may even go. Who knows that the connections are going to decide over the next couple of weeks. And, of course, all other three-year-olds that weren't part of the first uh, 39 individuals that thing came in at 22 to 1. That might not be a bad play now. Uh, of course, a Stronghold is 30 after winning the Santa Anita Derby. That's a, that's a nice little price. And the horse that you picked that uh, had no points and now does have some, just a touch, uh, close to 22 to 1 as well. So we'll wait and see about that, that's for sure. All right, uh, Jonathan, I know you did a lot of hard work, so let's get started with some picks for today. 
Okay, let's look at Keelan first and look at the third race today. Seven furlong, he's on the dirt. It's an allowance race. And I like the number 11 horse in here, Northern Chill. This is a three-year-old gelding from the Blair Jordan barn. Rule, uh, Ray Lou Gutierrez aboard to ride. He's listed at 9-2 to two on the morning line. First two races were run over sloppy tracks. He didn't care for it. Last time out, caught a fast track for the first time and ran very, very well. I like the draw. Nine to two on the morning line. Number 11, Northern Chill, wins today's third race out at Keeneland. Keeneland's third race, the 11, Northern Chill. Number 11 in the third race at Keeneland is Jonathan's pick for us there. You got one at San Anita? Yeah, third race, six and a half furlongs down the hillside, turf course. And I like the number four horse in here. I'll have another kiss. Uh, this is a four-year-old filly from the Doug O'Neill barn. Antonio Frisu aboard to ride. This horse is cutting back from a mile. I love horses coming down the hill, cutting back in distance. Six to one on the morning line. Number four, I'll have another kiss. Wins today's third race out at Santa Anita. Oh, you're just... No, oh, man, another kiss. Okay, here we go. Third race, number four, another kiss. We'll get one if we can get that home a winner, that's for sure. Third race, the four horse, a Jonathan Ardoon's play at Santa Anita. Mandatory payoffs today at Santa Anita. Everything goes out the door. And you have uh, four full sheets of handicapping offered today, Jonathan, at your website, right? Yes, Keeneland Aqueduct, uh, uh, <laughs> Santa Anita, and Oakland. Yes. I'm losing it, Ralph. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> we, uh, we understand losing it once in a while, that's for sure. A uh, busy weekend, and I'm sure you're going to digest a lot of what happened yesterday and uh, what's happening today and ahead. And so uh, Wednesday show will kind of recap uh, the situation as we see it, especially after the Monday decision in Kentucky about uh, Baffert's horse, Muth. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. It'll be interesting, Ralph. And by the way, Keeneland runs on Wednesday, so we'll have Keeneland and Tampa Bay. On. There you go. Keeneland on Wednesday. Oh, that's a, a great time of the year, that's for sure. And uh, Jonathan and I can say you did a yeoman's job this weekend. Thanks a lot. We will talk to you tomorrow. Go get a second cup of coffee. Thanks, Ralph. Stay safe and be well. All right. You got him, a man. We're cranking along on this Sunday show. Coming up next, Rich Ang gave us another winner yesterday in the Final Four. But what does he think about tomorrow night's final between Connecticut and Purdue? And he gave us a winner in horse racing, too, you know. He'll be right back giving us picks in both. Don't go away. Born from the tragedy of 9-11, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation is committed to helping our nation's heroes and their families in their darkest hours. When a first responder or veteran doesn't return home and leaves behind a young family, Tunnel to Towers supports them. The foundation pays off their mortgages and lifts their financial burdens through their Gold Star Family Home Program and Fallen First Responder Home Program. Through their Smart Home Program, catastrophically injured veterans and first responders regain their independence with a mortgage-free home, specially adapted adapted to meet their unique physical needs. Tunnel to Towers also provides housing assistance and services to our nation's homeless veterans through their Homeless Veteran Program. They are helping more than 2,000 in 2023 because no veteran should be living on the streets of the country they signed up to protect. Join Tunnel to Towers on its mission to do good and never forget 9-11 or the sacrifices made by our nation's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2, T.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. Back on the Race Day Las Vegas show for this Sunday. Remember, we take off Monday and Tuesday. We'll be back on Wednesday morning at our usual start time at 7 a.m. want to remind everybody again, as Jonathan uh, told us, uh, Keeneland will be running on Wednesday, so it'll be kind of a fun show. We'll wrap up what happened, of course, this weekend and take a look uh, in, in seriously now and take a serious look at uh, maybe uh, what's going to be happening on Kentucky Derby and Derby Day, that's for sure. But tomorrow we have a national championship. The NCAA championship game is tomorrow. It will feature 
the University of Connecticut against the University of uh, Purdue, uh, two teams that everybody thought were two of the best teams when they started out. They proved to, d- to be so, that's for sure, and they'll match up in what's going to be a hell of a contest tomorrow in the NCAA championship with us, a man who picked uh, Connecticut yesterday and laid the points and still won because uh, Connecticut uh, won the game and covered, and uh, and so did Purdue yesterday covered. But uh, an, another winner from Rich Ang, and of course Richie gave us a winning horse as well. So good morning, Rich. Hey, good morning, Ralph. And uh, before we start the segment, I want the uh, people to take a look at my hat. My stepdaughter uh-huh. Chris got me this hat yesterday. Yeah, and I wore it during the game. But it's a, a University of Connecticut yeah. Huskies hat. Yeah, it's a Huskies. And uh, she knows how much uh, I'm rooting for Connecticut to win the national championship because uh, my uh, future book bets on uh, the UConn Huskies. So one step away, one game away. Well, uh, you know, and you're the favorite one step away, that's for sure, because when they opened up the prices on the uh, game uh, right after the two games were over yesterday, here at the South Point, Connecticut opened up a six-point favorite. The total on the game for the points uh, scored for both teams is, was 148. Uh, I don't know how much is going to juggle from there, but in any case, uh, they are the favorite to win the championship. And I guess uh, I don't have to ask you who to pick because uh, you got interest. Well, yeah, I, I've got UConn at 18-1 to 1 to start the season, and then I bet them more during the season. But uh, the, the key about tomorrow's game, Ralph, and, oh, by the way, you know, if, uh, when – People watched the game yesterday. I said the only way Alabama can stay close is if they're hot from three-point zone. Well, in the first half, they were eight out of 11 from three. I mean, they were sizzling hot, and they went into halftime losing by four points, and that made me pretty confident that UConn was going to take care of business. I know Alabama played great in the second half for a while. It was 56-56, and then UConn just pulled away late with the overpower. But uh, – you know, the thing about the game on Monday against Purdue is uh, the last center to give Zach Eady any sort of problems in the pivot was a kid named Hunter Dickinson, who used to play at, at Michigan. And he was the same size as Eady. He was about seven foot two, 300 pounds. Well, he transferred to Michigan, so the Big Ten didn't have anybody who could play uh, Zach Eady. But uh, Donovan Klingen for UConn, Ralph, he's seven two, yeah. 290 pounds. He can see, look, Eady, eyeball to eyeball. And if you watched the game yesterday, his defense, uh, I, I think if if Klingon can play just about even with Edie, the other four UConn players and their bench are far superior to Purdue starting four and their bench. Well, all I can say is uh, two things, uh, Richie. First of all, uh, yeah, that was, uh, you know, Connecticut did yesterday what they have done throughout the entire uh you know, throughout the entire, uh, the, uh, you know, brackets, uh, even if they were close at halftime with any other team that they beat, they just pulled away and really, you know, stuck it into high gear in the second half. That's what they did yesterday as well. But a lot of smart gamblers, and I say this uh, because they are, a lot of the smart gamblers, especially guys who are playing uh, future books as you are, when they get to the main event, they save a little bit money on the other side, and you have a, a great uh, a chance to middle it uh, you you know, you have a chance to middle it because all Connecticut has to do is win the game. They can win by three. And if you bet Purdue as a saver on the other side, you can, you can, uh, you know, you got the best of both worlds. That is correct. I've been thinking about it. And uh, if you're going to bet UConn, I suggest you buy now because I don't think the minus six is going to last going mm-hmm. into Monday, Ralph. And so uh, if you like Connecticut, bet them now at the minus six. If you like Purdue, I think you're way closer to post time because I think the the line's going to go as high as seven, maybe even seven and a half. It's almost one-way action so far on the Huskies. Well, Richie, you came with the uh, last race winner yesterday at Keeneland for us on the show, so we know uh, your thoughts about the uh, championship game tomorrow. We wish you all the luck. And uh, give us a horse uh, at Santa Anita and uh, maybe at Keeneland if you want to, and then we'll let you go. Yeah, let's uh, let's zing through my picks real quick. I, I did pick the two basketball games, the women's game today. Uh, I really like South Carolina minus the six over Iowa. Mm-hmm. I, I think if uh, if it wasn't for Caitlin Clark, I think this line would be more like eight, eight and a half, nine. Uh-huh. So I like South Carolina to go thirty-eight and zero and win the title in the women's side. Yep. I do like Connecticut minus the six, and I, I suggest betting it now because it's not going to stay right. six for long. And then as far as horses, Ralph. Uh, had a winner at Keeneland yesterday in the last race mm-hmm. with Running B. Let's go to race four at Keeneland. 
It's a two-turn uh, first-level uh, optional claimer, and a horse that I put in my stable mail is the number eight, Pretty Anna. Pretty Anna is a half-sister to Gunrunner, and Steve Asmussen, the trainer, also trained Gunrunner. I know he is uh, very, very high on her. Uh, she hasn't run really fast speed figures yet, but this is her first time facing winners. I'm looking for improvement. Uh, obviously, her pedigree suggests that she could be any kind. So let's go with the eight, Pretty Anna, nine to two in race four at Keeneland. And uh, to finish up with another pick, mm -hmm. let's go to Santa Anita to uh, race number six, Ralph. It's six furlongs, claiming $32,000. And uh, an angle that I like is uh, when a horse wins and actually runs a slower speed figure than the race before. And that is the case with number two, Bell Epoque who was also claimed, and the claim was voided, Ralph. So free roll for uh, Doug O'Neill. Uh, nine to five uh, has won two in a row. The last race was slower. I think if this uh, horse runs to the speed figure two back, mm -hmm. I think this horse wins today. Number two, Belly Poke, race six, San Nita. All right. So in the uh, race at Keeneland, Keeneland, uh, the uh, fourth race, number eight. And at San Anita, race number six, horse number two. Thanks a lot, Richie. You've done the yeoman jobs for us all through uh, the football and uh, basketball season, and certainly now we're turning our attentions really to the racing season as we get uh, closer to the Triple Crown in summer racing. And so uh, I know you'll be rooting for Connecticut, and got to tell you, so will I. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, see that championship game uh, tomorrow. And, of course, on Wednesday, we'll, uh, you know, take a look back. Thanks a lot, my man. Hey, thanks, Ralph. Good luck, everybody. All right, now before we go to our final segment with Jerry Jackowitz, I do want to give you John Lendo's picks, and I want to remind everybody out there that uh, John Lendo, not on our show today, he's uh, doing a family commitment over this weekend. He'll be back with us on Wednesday. His Lendo report has been here uninterrupted all through the weekend, and he has two Lendo reports today here, one for Keeneland, one for Santa Anita, full Lendo reports here at the South Point Racebook for Keeneland, and for Santa Anita, available only here in Las Vegas at the South Point Racebook, free of charge, exclusively here. And uh, it is uh, complimentary to you because they uh, love horse players and, and John Lindo. So here we go with John Lindo's picks. First, I'm going to go to Keeneland for you. And it comes early. The second race at Keeneland, John Lindo likes number four, True Jedi. Number four, True Jedi, 9-2 to two on the morning line with Irad Ortiz Jr. Second race at Keeneland, the four horse. John Lendo's pick, remember, first race post time is 10 o'clock this morning. So that race will go about 10.30 this morning. Second race, the four at Keeneland. And then at Santa Anita, uh, John likes a horse in the Angels Flight Stakes, the ninth race on the card. He likes number six, Zona Verde. Number six, Zona Verde. Three to one with Juan Hernandez aboard. That in the ninth race at Santa Anita, number six, Zona Verde. Those are John Lendo's picks. And don't forget his uh, Lendo reports right here at the South Point free of charge today. We wrap it up with Jerry Jackwitz. He'll be coming up right next. Don't go away. From the South Point studio. Yeah. The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. It's a comedy. See over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yeah. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least... Two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. Oreo. And host, Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> but I look at the clock, I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines, live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. The Race Day Las Vegas Show, the only exclusive daily local media racing information source in Las Vegas. All right, wrapping it up on the Race Day Las Vegas radio program. We now go to Jerry Jackowitz in Orange today, standing by. Jerry, good morning. 
Good morning. I guess I'm in an orange mood today. Yes, you are. I guess feeling uh, pretty good. Yes, uh, it's, it's finally a nice day out. Uh, not no problem with the sunshine. A little bit of cool out there though. So we know you're inside with a short sleeve shirt. Anyhow, uh, on Wednesday we usually recap what happens over the weekend when we have more time to do it. But just in a brief, maybe one minute uh, out of the three races yesterday, what impressed you the most of the uh, winners of the? Uh, well, the, the obvious impressive winner was Sierra Leone. I mean, it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal performance. I expected when Dornach and him came together, there would be some sort of, you know, struggle that the two of them would engage at some point and we would see a duel. What we saw was Dornach got alongside of Sierra Leone and he said, no, I don't want any part of this. Go ahead. Go win the race. <laughs> Just quit. <laughs> so, so much for the door knock. Whatever hopes I had for him are gone. Um, Sierra Leone is a, a massive, powerful animal, and uh, uh, it's going to take. There's only one horse I think that has a has an ability to beat him, and that's fierceness. And I think this is now down to a two horse race. But uh, well, and of course we will have to. we will have our handicappers. You being one, uh, updating your uh, top five for the Kentucky Derby. We'll have that on Wednesday's show. But uh, you're right about the size of Sierra Leone. It impressed me when I saw him in the post parade yesterday. I said, "Boy, this is one yeah. big animal." And if he puts it all together as he has, uh, he could be real mm -hmm. dangerous. And his running style would suggest he likes the, he'll like the extra eighth of a mile. Yeah, no, I, I don't see any reason why he won't go on to a mile and a quarter. Uh, so I have no problem with that. Um, you know, he's he's got a huge, he covers a lot of ground. I mean, I'd love to get the number on. I know that at one time Secretariat covered 26 feet per jump, and that was considered an unbelievable number. And I've never really heard any any real numbers on other horses except for 21 or 22 feet. I've never heard much beyond that. But I bet you Sierra Leone is more than 22 feet per jump. Well, uh, maybe you can uh, you can uh, uh, research that and find out for us. That's for sure. That would be interesting because in my entire lifetime, every horse that it has ever been a horse that, it, that you say, wow, this is the one, has always been compared to Secretariat. So we'll wait and see about that. Right. That's for sure. Well, you know, Secretariat did run the greatest race of all time in the yeah. Kentucky Derby, in my opinion, in the Kentucky Derby of – of 1973, yeah. and I wasn't even a horse race fan then. I had to learn that. Well, I was, and that still impresses me to this day, that's for sure. The only horse that came close, in my opinion, is Flight Line, but that's uh, an opinion, and for another day, that's for sure. We need to get to the yeah. picks, Jerry, so what do you say? Yeah, well, um, let's go to Aqueduct, mm -hmm. and uh, let's go to the fifth race, Catching Heat, the five horse for Chad Brown. It's a one-number horse. As you know, I don't like to bet one-number horses. But Chad Brown's one of the few trainers that actually does consistently improve horses in his second start. I think the early speed was against the horse last time. Today, he'll use that early speed to finish strong. I love the five in the race number five. I'll play the five over the two, six, seven. Small reverses to break even. I might go an extra five, two, two, five. All right, so the five over two, six, seven in the uh, fifth race. That was uh, That is, of course, the anchor in the uh, early pick four, early pick five. Number five, catching heat. And the link up's two, six, seven in reverse. And um, why well, just to remind everybody that that is a feature play on Jerry J's power page, but he has two of them today on the power page. So make sure you get it there. What about uh, Sanita? Okay, let's go to uh, race number three. Okay. Something I, I've said more than once. I'll have another kiss. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the four horse in the third race. This is just a lo lovely improving cycle. Horse takes this, uh, Philly takes a lot of racing. She looks like she's racing into shape for Doug O'Neill. Last time out, she had the worst of it uh, wide into the first turn, going two turns back to one turn today. I like you coming down the hill. I like the four. I'll have another kiss in race number three. I'll play the four over the one, two, five, and seven. Reverse one, two, five, and seven over the four. The four is both a feature play. And a pop-out key. All Those right. Those are my favorite. I want to remind everybody out there that this is a good housekeeping seal of approval for handicappers today. Jonathan Ardoon also liked this source in that race. Mm -hmm. So with a double whammy there, Jerry's pick is also number four. I'll have another kiss. Uh, linking up with the numbers one, two, five, and seven, and reverse. $2 ROI on the uh, four and the third. Don't forget, full uh, power pages for Aqueduct and Sanita at jerryjspowerpage.com. 
It's been a heck of a weekend, folks. And before we get together on Wednesday, we'll have more to talk about, not only this weekend, but tomorrow, etc. So in the meantime, Jerry has one more thing to say. Have a great race day, everybody.